Marilyn, consciousness is something that I have personally been obsessed with, but it is really important for everyone to understand. And there's lots of things flowing about it. I want to try to step back with you and, and look at consciousness as an anthropologist, a psychologist, somebody who has studied it in various forms, and try to pick out characteristics. So pick it apart a little bit, and then we'll put it back together. Well, I think there's the psychological dimensions of our experience, our awareness, uh, that sense of intention. Uh, in the morning when we get out of bed and we intend to, you know, go about our business, we have to propel our feet across the bed and onto the floor. Uh, that's a demonstration of kind of consciousness in action. Uh, it's the attention we bring to things. And at the same time as we can talk about these aspects of consciousness, it's equally true, more true, that most of our behavior is regulated by our unconscious. So all the ways in which we aren't aware of the things mm. around us and that we're not clear about our intentions. Uh, and so we can begin to think about how to bring more awareness, more consciousness to the unconscious aspects of our experience. I think about the, the notion of inattentional blindness, for example. Uh, this is a concept that was developed at MIT, and the, the notion that our culture creates a set of possibilities for what is possible. And so we live our lives seeing that which we expect to see. Mm. So our awareness is primed by our culture. Mm. And yet you can begin to see that we have these blinders up that inhibit our ability to see what is the whole scope of experience because we have these inattentional blindnesses, as it were. Uh, I think about it in terms of the way the dominant educational system functions. You know, we, we're really looking at knowledge acquisition and, you know, the reading, writing, and arithmetic aspects of how we fill our minds with information. Mm -hmm. And yet you can start thinking about other qualities or capacities of our consciousness, that sense of relationship, that sense of compassion, mm. uh, gratefulness, altruism, forgiveness. Um, these are qualities and, and contents of consciousness and of our awareness. Uh, the issue of attention, again, becomes a good one when we think about is the glass half full or half empty? Well, if we're primed by our culture to see it as half empty, then we're not imbuing it with the possibilities that come when we see it as half full. I'm tr I would try to get categories that we can put some of these characteristics in and, and see how many categories we have. Certainly, we haven't discussed it. It's sort of obvious is the perception category. We see, we hear our, our, sen our various senses that we have, and, and, and we, we know what those are. So those are part of our consciousness. They're, they're more of the seemingly mechanical thing, but latest brain research has shown that the brain helps form what we see as well. So we have the, the uh, perception aspect. That, that, now you've talked about attention, and that kind of focuses our, our consciousness. And then intention which uh, puts uh, a, a, a meaning to our consciousness, a direction, to our, a focus to our, an outward uh, aboutness to our, to our intention. Then you talked about unconscious. Uh, and then, and then a, a kind of a cultural relationship with uh, altruism and pa compassion and, and, and uh, 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 feelings of, of empathy and sympathy, which, which you need a, a, a you or a, th a second party or, or even a third, third person. Uh, as part of it. Are those some categories that, that all sure. together? Sure. So we can think about consciousness in this qualia sense of, you know, the stuff we carry around in this mind-body system that we yeah. think about as the I. Right. Uh, we clearly know that our consciousness is also shaped, formed, embedded within culture. And so language and the symbols that we share begin to construct certain models of what is possible. Um, I had this opportunity to be with the Achuar in the Amazon, and uh, our guide was getting very animated looking up at the treetops. And the, you know, the group that were, you know, I was with were from the north. And, you know, we were like, what's the big deal, Walter? It's, you know, it's trees. We are in the rainforest, you know. But for him, it was about the howler monkeys that were jumping from tree to tree. And for him, that 
meant survival. It was food. For us, food translates to grocery store, right? <laughs> so the culture provides a context for being able to attend to aspects of our reality. Mm. Um, the Achuar are interesting also because they make use of plant medicines. So they very much believe in non-ordinary realities and the notion that, you know, the physical reality is but one small piece of a much more, you know, um, engaged and animated cosmology. And so if you come from that culture, you begin to see things, you can attend to things that are absolutely out of the scope of possibility within mm. the Western or Northern mm. culture that we come from. So I think that you know we can think about our own unique individuated selves, but it has to be entangled in this notion of the intersubjective. And then I would go one step further and say that there's also this transpersonal notion. Something about our consciousness may allow us to access aspects that transcend our mind-body and our mind-body with your mind-body to something that puts us in touch with what could be called the sacred or the spiritual or the divine. This latter one would have some controversy to it because uh, I think some of the earlier categories we talked about everybody would subscribe to in one form or another. May, people would want different categories. It, it's often said that philosophers would rather use another philosopher's toothbrush than their nomenclature. But, <laughs> but in one way or another, these different categories would, would, uh, would consist. But now the latter two uh, in... in uh, 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 as I say, primitive people, I, I didn't know what else to say, ha have certain kinds of feelings about, uh, about the world and, and their primitiveness may be more in touch with some reality than we do. I don't think so, but it could be. And then transpersonal psychology, if it brings in another broader uh, worldview or our, our mind is, is reaching out to something else, that, that's certainly controversial. I used to have an experience when I was a kid that I would idly daydream. And different ideas would come into my head. I'd see shapes and sometimes I'd draw them, you know. And then um, beginning in about the 70s, mid-70s, I started doing some research on remote viewing. And one day I had an experience. I was working with a psychologist at Wayne State University, Charlie Soley, and um, he had gone out. He was the outbound investigator and I was in with a subject. And he came back and he asked the subject, who was a psychic, to describe her impressions of where he'd been. And there was very little that matched what she, what he had experienced. And so he turned to me and he said, well, what'd you get? And I said, well, nothing. I'm the scientist here. I'm the objective one. And he said, you sure you didn't get anything? And I said, well, it's interesting. I just had a little quick image and it was like an omega symbol that came into my mind. And he got all excited and, you know, this was a pilot study. This wasn't a formal randomized study, but it was one of my first experiments and experiences in this domain. And he took me over to a building that had all of these little omega signs. There was a, a moat. The moat was surrounded by a fence and the fence was made up of these symbols. Etched in concrete on the side of the building was the symbol. That suggests to me that the content of my consciousness is more than just what I'm perceiving from this limited mind-body experience, but actually has the capacity in some senses to reach out and gain information. So I'm able to acquire uh, information that I can then bring into my attention that didn't come from this, you know, uh, vertical axis of mind-body. Mm -hmm. So all of that by way of saying that I think there is so much more than we can possibly understand about what are the qualities and capacities of our consciousness. It's a great mystery mm -hmm. and a tremendous opportunity.